I realized over time that I was constantly helping people make better business decisions because we use their financial information and financial intelligence to assess where they need to go. And so many decisions revolve around financial information and many people are scared to even look at that stuff. So joining me on the line today, I've got Liz Jarvis from the Better Business Decisions Organisation. I'm not sure what the end of that is, but it is definitely a place that helps you make better business decisions. Welcome to the call, Liz. Thank you for having me, David. It's lovely to be here. So better business decisions, obviously that's what you do or what you help people do. And can you maybe explain a bit more? Yeah, so as you would know, in the coaching and education kind of space, it's really quite complex to find exactly what your niche is. And after I'm a chartered accountant of over 30 years, I no longer do tax returns. So getting a name for what we do was quite a complex exercise, as many in business would know. I realized over time that I was constantly helping people make better business decisions because we use their financial information and financial intelligence to assess where they need to go. And so many decisions revolve around financial information and many people are scared to even look at that stuff. So you talked about you used to be an accountant. I suppose, look, a question that comes to mind for me, isn't that my accountant's job to help me do that sort of thing? The industry has changed a lot. And I would agree that, yes, I certainly did that for a lot of people in my many years in public practice and in and out of public practice for various reasons. But unfortunately, a lot has changed in the last 10 to 15 years. The ATO changed the requirements for accountants and who's responsible for the information that accountants report in your tax return. That's made them all a little bit nervous about tax planning and things like that. So where we fit is that handholding and assistance that your accountants either don't have the personality for or don't have the time for. Uh, And we want to bridge that gap. So some of my clients do need or are making so much money that I know they need tax planning and I'm even able to walk the client through that sort of thing and have them pass it through to their accountant. So we work alongside Side the accountants and the bookkeepers. We want our clients to be in control of their data. Even today, New South Wales government did a backflip about having to reapply, I think it was, for some of the COVID grants. And the accounting industry came out and just went crazy about it because the accounting industry is suddenly holding everybody's reins. I don't know what's happened. Business owners should be able to know what their turnover is and whether it's changed, whether they're eligible for things. But somehow the accounts have taken over all of that. It's taken away from the their ability to really help business owners where they're at every day. Yeah. You mentioned something prior to the recording and you were talking about tax minimization. And I think one of your one of your specific areas of interest is showing people how they reduce their tax. Yeah, it is. I've had a few conversations in the last week about from people that have sought out that kind of information from their accountant and have been told the simple answer of it's not that simple. But I see tax planning as a lifelong exercise. I've assisted many high wealth individuals with their tax planning in the past. And one of the reasons I moved on from where I was, was I thought it was such a shame that the the general everyday business owner wasn't getting access to that kind of information. And as we reach different stages in life, we need more cash to live on or less cash to live on. And there's all sorts of opportunities in tax planning for that. That's the way the tax system is designed. If you, particularly if you have a company, it's a lower tax rate because you want to be able to reinvest in that business to improve that business and improve the overall economy, really. There's ways and means but you need to think laterally and hopefully before the fact to use something, even something as extreme as a 25-year loan from your company can be done and very easily. But accountants will often miss that and just say, oh, you can't borrow from your company. That's not allowed anymore. So stuff like that is where I, I enjoy opening the eyes of clients and accountants as to what can be done. Fantastic. It sounds like a pretty compelling idea, just reducing tax. (laughs) Let me ask you, just on another note, look, you've been in business for quite a number of years. What would you consider to be the most valuable piece of business advice you've received? Actually, you know what? It was last week and (laughs) it was about marketing, actually, because marketing, what I do is very difficult. Mm. And the advice was show them what they're missing out on, which did make me more inclined to talk about the tax side of things that I do, which I generally had shied away from quite a bit. I always do it with my clients, but I just don't necessarily use 
use it as a hook for marketing. I think I think it was Dan Kennedy, who's a famous copywriter, who said the business is about selling money at a discount. And I've really enjoyed the journey of making what I do a marketable commodity. It's good fun. It basically does come down to one thing, though. Really, all people want is time or money, and that's it. So whatever you do, whatever product you sell, you need to show how it saves one or the other or both. Very good. Tell me, do you have any favorite authors or bloggers or any books that you've read in the past few years that sort of resonated with you? Stephen Covey was always my favorite. And in recent years, there's a, a few others that I follow as well. But I think he, he'd been my all-time favorite. His seven habits are pretty continue to be pretty effective, but not always that easy to actually deliver on. So I think that's the thing. There's lots of books and ideas. And Brene Brown's one of my younger favorites that identify many of of the things that we need to do in order to be our best selves. But the truth of it is actually getting there is harder than most of us think. There's another one, someone Marshall, he's got a book called Triggers. When I read that one, I didn't feel quite so bad about how I wasn't perfect yet. It's just really hard to get there. There's many barriers that we put up for ourselves. Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. Look, in the end, Liz, you really help people become more effective at their tax. Obviously, what your business name is better business decisions. And I think for most people, they don't have the data they need. So it sounds like you're that person that we can go to with our business and say, can you tell me what the numbers say? Yeah. Look, for me, the most important part of what I do is to take the anxiety out of looking at the numbers. Suck the scare out of accounting was my first crowdfunder. I I want business owners to feel comfortable with their numbers and to ultimately actually enjoy them. So that's the, that's where we want to take them from fear to enjoyment. And we do lots of different things along the way, depending on which one of our packages you decide to come on board with. Fantastic. Thanks so much for your time today, Liz. It's been a pleasure to meet you and also have this conversation. So thank you. Thank you so much, David. It's been great to be here. 